morning. All right, so welcome everyone. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to see everyone today. And I think today is the third day, right? Today should be the third day, I guess. Either way, it is, either the, yeah, today is the third day. So we would begin from where we stopped yesterday. So we stopped at candles. And while I'm trying to believe that um, giving you the material wasn't a big mistake, I also believe that you've actually gone through it. And if you haven't, then we can always continue from there. OK? So we would begin from where we stop. And why is Chris smiling to the camera? Well, it's a great thing to smile. So we stopped at market linguistics. All right, we stopped at market linguistics. Whatever is making you laugh right now, praise. Put that in the chat section. I'm very curious right now, so I need to know what's actually making you laugh. Okay, just put that in the chat section. All right. So uh, we stopped at market linguistics. Okay. So and we started with the meaning of um, candlesticks, known as um, footprint or known as leg, whatever it is, okay? Candlesticks are just, you know, past records that lead us to make better decisions. All right, great thing. Great thing to you, Chris. So, and then we moved on to, um, you know, the formation of candle, that is the open, the close, the high, and the low, okay? And then we stopped at um, types of candlesticks. Okay, that is um, where we talked about the bullish and bearish candles. So let's continue from, continue from um, we would continue from where we stopped. Okay, so I'll switch this right here to Canva. And then when it arises, we would continue from there on our ebook. So if you are really feeling great today, go to the comment section and let me know. We started the whole thing with great vibe. Okay, so, okay, let me try to share the screen here with you. I'm trying to share the screen here with you. If you can't see anyone, switch to gallery mode or switch on your camera, all right? So, Trying to share screen here. Yeah. All right, so back to Canva. And there we go. Okay. Okay. So present this here. We are good to go. This is supposed to be working right now. Okay, so we stopped at this angle. Stop at this angle. Now the screen is really quite cluttered here. Okay. All right. So yesterday we stopped at um. The types of candles, that is the uh, bullish candle, which opens at the bottom and closes at the top. And then we um, talked about the next one, that is the bearish candle. It's called the bear, bulls and bear, bulls and bear. Bulls represents buyers and bears represent sellers. So when the market is actually crashing, of course, it's on a bearish turn. And when the market is actually rising, it's on a bullish Done. Okay, so then the third candle is called the indecision candle. Although indecision candles appear in different ways, okay, so we would know the types of candles we should trade and the types we should actually ignore. Okay, so let's go to the next one. If you can hear me clearly, just let me know. Okay, very, very important. Bring this in my notice if you can hear me clearly. All right. 
Okay, so the the first thing on this screen says um, the size, the location, the color of a candle are used to interpret the psychology behind the candle. All right. So this implies that. Um, the position of a candle during price movements decides either it's small or large, the color, either it's bullish or bearish. So people can use different colors. Some can use blue as their blue color and then red as their bear color. It depends on you. So that's why I can't say anything like white or black, okay? You can use any candle. It's just for you to, to refresh the fact that, okay, fine, one goes upwards and one crashes lower, all right? So we have that point here, small candles and large candles denote volume of the market player's pressure, okay? This is a very, very important point. This is something that you should understand, okay? Because when you need indicators to identify this, remember the first point, the size, small or large, the location at the top of the trend, at the bottom of the trend, or on a straight trend, all right? And the color, is it red or green? Okay, is it white or black? Which one color you use as a booze and beer? You know, they interpret, okay, fine. This is what the market players are trying to do. Now, the size itself, small candles, large candles denotes volume, all right? This actually implies that, without using indicators, okay? Tiny candles imply that the pressure of that particular trend, the pressure of that particular trend is reducing, okay? The, the um, trend players are actually getting weaker and weaker, okay? And when the candles are larger, okay? It implies that, oh, volume is increasing, volatility is increasing, more money is moving into this trend, <laughs> okay? So more money to, you know, move this market trend, okay? So, but then the next point now, <laughs> potential reversals, okay? Small candles, like I explained the other time, denotes indecision. Okay, should we buy, should we sell? It also denotes weakness, oh, getting weak. And it also implies potential reversal. So whenever you're trying to buy a, a market, maybe you're not using TP. You're just going to close when market goes against you, okay? So when you notice, okay, fine, the candles are getting smaller. This implies that sooner or later, the, the opposing pressure can just drop a large candle on you and you see that you have stopped out or your money reduces, okay? So whenever you are trading, always pay attention to the size of candles, to the location of the candles, okay? So small candles imply low volume of pressure and then large candles denote strength, large volume of pressure and rigid decisions before the next rejection zone, okay? Mark the last part before the next rejection zone. Because irrespective of how well the market trend is moving, it is going to, the um, pressure is going to cease at the next rejection zone. So it is up to the market players to break the zone or they are taken over by the opposition, okay? So these points are very, very important. Large candles, oh, bullish or bearish, you know, much volume, there is power here. Small candles, oh, something is even, when it comes to your entry triggers, okay, because certain situations happen in the markets, when you notice that, okay, fine, your confirmation candle seems to be weak, it is better not to take that trade yet and wait for the next candle to confirm that. We'll get all of that later, okay? So the um, first bullish candle here is called the long Maribozo candle, okay? It is bowed, it's, it's a kind of candle that is bowed or shaving, doesn't have um, an extreme high or an extreme low. Most time I have seen candles like this in the market, maybe markets like um, V75, okay? So it actually means that bulls are in total control 
of the markets on this day, okay? The usage of day here, you know, whenever you're trying to trade, these points are very, very important. They are important for you because everything that I'm teaching you now, so actually learn how they work, go to the daily time frame and see how they actually affect the rest of the trading days, okay? So this type of candle is called the long Maribuzu candle, and it means that bulls are in control of the market on this day. Now, there is one called the long bullish candle, okay? The long bullish candle. It is not as strong as the long Maribuzu candle, okay? But it still implies that the bulls, that is the buyers, are still in power. So which implies that if on the daily time frame, the market closes on this candle, it implies that that day, if you sell, I mean, if you buy the market on that day, you most likely have the markets go in favor of you, all right? Because the market price is going to move in favor of the trend. These candles, each candle simplify, or should I say each candle signifies the, the trend of the market, either short term or long term. It tells you what the market is trying to do at that particular time. Excuse me. So the next one is called the long closing bozo bullish candle. Okay, it also signifies a strong day. You don't need too much stories. These are just straightforward. It signifies a strong day. So whenever you see a candle like this, as far as the week is not so long that it reaches somewhere around here, okay, it is still a strong day. All right, it is still so when the daily candle closes and you see this kind of move, okay, you know that for that day you you will be buying the markets for that day. All right, and the market will most likely move in your favor. Okay, and then we have the long bullish candle. It is not as strong as the Maribozu candle, but bulls are still in power. So whenever you see these candles, each of these candles, either you are trading daily time frame, or you are trading M30, seeing these candles imply that, especially on the, on the daily, seeing these candles imply that, oh boy, you can still buy this market today and it will still go well. Just wait for retracement and then enter the market, okay? So let's move to the next point. So if this is, um, should I say um, self-explanatory or maybe easy to understand, let me know in the comments section, okay? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, so we have the long opening bozo bullish candle. Okay, we have the long opening bozo bullish candle. All right, so it is not as strong as the Maribozo candle, but bulls are still in power. Once you see this kind of candles, they all imply that oh, markets is still going to <laughs> there is a lot of thing going on in that conversation market is still in a bullish trend okay so it's it seems that buyers are still are still in power okay long opening bozo bullish can do buyers are still in power then something else happens what happens inverted bullish umbrella can do why are these candles called umbrella can do because they are very effective when they are found below or above a market trend, okay? Umbrella, below or above a market trend. So whenever you see this inverted bullish umbrella, it signifies strong reversal complications. After a bullish pump, that is after markets as bought, it performs the function of a shooting star. And after a bearish move, it performs the function of an inverted umbrella kind of, okay? So it's, it's, it's either below or above, all right? Whenever I see this, it means that there is a potential reversal along the way. There's a, there's a potential reversal coming along. So you have to be careful about the position you place in the market, okay? So 
look at this example now. This is this is um, a a bullish candle here, and then we have this inverted bullish umbrella acting as a shooting star because it is above the chest. So let's assume the market has been moving from this point upwards, okay, from this point, all right. Then it forms in the middle of the market trend, that is at the top of the market trend. It is not by the side, not in the middle. In the middle, it doesn't have any significance, all right. In the middle of candles, it doesn't have anything, but at the top, it has severe complications, okay. So, Forming this candle, then you can feel like, oh, seems like the market is going to sell today, but you don't have to sell the market yet until the third candle closes below the lows of this candle and the candle before it. Okay. The the ex expansion is written down here. The appearance of a shooting star signals possible market stop okay but a bearish content but a bearish confirmation is required before selling so this implies that when the candle forms and then one forms at the top the third candle has to close below their lows okay the third candle has to close below their lows and of course after a bearish move and then it, it appears at the bottom of a bearish trend. It performs the function of an inverted hammer. Okay, so let's go. So remember this example very well. You see something like this. You see the um, inverted bullish umbrella candle acting as a shooting star. Shooting star meaning that it's at the top. Okay, either it is two candles that form here or one candle make sure it closes below the low of the candle before it's very very important okay and it's and it actually delivers strong strong sell signal let me try to look for that here let me try to look for that here let me try to look for all of that here let me share that with um 25 25. Okay, so let's look for that that's kind of candle formation. That kind of candle formation. Because there are there are different scenarios. Trying to look for an AMA. AMA is, it's, it's off. okay, yeah, this is one here, this is one here, this is one here. Now, look at this, can, can you see this um, chart? Uh, let me try to bring it close. All right, this is it, yeah. Okay, so, bearish move. We haven't even moved to um, the other one that is acting as, uh, as, as um hammer okay this is it this is also the umbrella candle same with what we saw the other time okay so a bearish move forms it forms some people would feel like oh the market is trying to buy let me buy let me buy but then there are times there are times whereby it will just continue okay but then it is at the bottom of the trend so when the next candle forms can say this candle didn't close above the heights of the previous candle. So you are not meant to buy this market yet. Now look at it, the next candle form there. This is an indecision candle. If this, if the um, bullish pressure in this market was not too high, it could have closed lower again and you've been losses, okay? Because it has not, um, like it has not defeated the bearish pressure, okay? But then this last candle, this is a, a long bullish candle, okay? It's closed above the highs of this market. And what happens when you enter at this point, where would your stop loss be? 
just below this place. Some people tell you that, oh, when you're trying to enter the market, eh, enter at somewhere here, yeah, put your stop loss below, but they don't even understand the psychology behind it. They just feel like they can put their stop loss somewhere there. They just feel like they can put that, and then it doesn't work that way. It's a very, very stupid idea. So you need to understand the psychology behind a market movement before even trying to trade it. It's, it gives you high success rate, you know, while trying to trade that move. Okay. So, okay. So it closes above here. And when you enter, you put your stop loss here, and the market moves in your favor. Okay. Let's look for a, a different situation that um, the market didn't obey. It's now C. See this particular place. This is looking almost like um, the the hammer. Okay, but then market formed here. All right, it formed. So it'll be like, wow, it's going to buy, and then you buy, you put your stop loss here, and what happens? The market stops you out, right? But then look at it. The hammer forming again for the second time. All right, you you would wait for it to close. As you can see, the candle around here, this particular candle closed above the high. So you just place your, your, your stop, your entry will be here and your stop loss would be below the hammer, okay? Or above it, whichever way it appears, all right? So let's go back to um, the main business. So if this is explanatory, let me know in the comment section, all right? All right. So let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I will talk about um, the entry. See, like what I said the other time, okay? This is an example here. This inverted bullish umbrella acting as a shooting star here, okay? Look at this illustration very well, right? This bullish can let's say the market has been buying. The market got here. Okay. Then this candle forms. Don't sell yet until the next candle, maybe the maybe the next one candle on or the next two candle closes below here. I've shown you a live market situation that this thing actually works, and, and that is just how it works. Okay. So if the candle must close below it, when it closes below it, that is a confirmation. That is a market psychology that implies that the, 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 the trend has changed, okay? This is how to know when market trend has changed, whenever you see this kind of trigger, all right? So the trend has changed. You don't need to start looking for IRs and IRs before you know trend has changed. The trend has changed like this. Okay, so your stop loss would be above the highs of this umbrella candle. Okay, above the highs of this umbrella candle. Around here. So that means it will just be around, around here. Let me see if I can draw something. Okay, your stop loss would be here, right? Your entry would be, would be here. Okay, as simple as that. All right, as simple as that. As simple as that. Okay, so uh, the next one. All right. So the next one is the inverted armor. That is inverted umbrella candle at the bottom. Inverted armor. That same candle that is upwards here that seems to form a shooting star. Below it is now what an inverted hammer. Okay. So it is an indication of a possible end of a bearish move. That is market is forming, and then this candle is not in the middle at all. It's not in the middle at the bottom. This candle is not effective in a ranging market. The umbrella can do either the inverted or the regular one. These types of candle, acting as armor and shooting star, they are ineffective in a consolidating market. All right, in a consolidating market, disregard them. 
okay? Except in the normal trending market, they must appear at the bottom or at the top of the trend. So that's when they're actually effective, okay? And the confirmation actually tells you, okay, fine, the market is moving, okay? So it is, it is an indication of a possible end of a bearish move, but a bullish confirmation is required before buying, all right? The, the third candle or the fourth candle, whichever candle forms, okay, must close above the high of must must close above the high of the previous candle in a range of markets it is ineffective because even after the breakouts markets would re, would retest okay so it doesn't really have um it is it is not a high probability confirmation all right it is not a high probability confirmation okay because in a range of markets series of candles can happen series of candles can happen. So these are high probability confirmation methods to trade, okay? So the third candle must close above this eye. Normally it closes above this eye, you just buy. Let me try to um, annotate this. So that implies that when markets form this thing, I see something like the inverted hammer below the trend. That's, that means the trend is coming down like this. Then this forms. Okay, then this forms. And then after that, what happens when it breaks above here, above the low, that's the high, that's the candle before it, then you enter your trade around there, you know, at, at the close. Don't enter the don't enter a market when the candle is still moving. That is your confirmation um, um candle or entry or whatever. Don't set it. Don't set it. Um, sorry. Don't enter while it is moving. Wait for the candle to close. Don't set pending orders. That's um, um, okay. Maybe maybe um, if if price breaks here, it is my pending order and then it's continue. There are certain situations whereby markets has actually moved, made extreme highs above it, but then it doesn't close be. It doesn't close above it or below it. It just gets rejected and then the trend continues. So that's why I don't always advise using um, um, pending orders, you know, certain pending orders, because the market moves based on confirmation. So that means market players enter the market based on confirmation. So you try to outsmart the market by setting pending order. No, it it is it is not um, um, a a high probability we are entering the market. It's 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 um it is it is a low probability it is a low probability um manner of trading so always wait for a candle to close before entering the markets always wait for a candle to close before entering the market is very very important don't enter when you say that oh it has spiked up no wait for it to close it must close above it okay so that is. So this is a bullish confirmation signal. Then this next one for me here, this is a white umbrella candle, called the white umbrella candle or bullish umbrella candle. You know, it becomes a hanging man. This is the pattern called hanging man. When this candle called a hammer is above a market trend, that is at the top of a market trend. It is called a hanging man because it's more like as if, um, there is there is a rope at the top of the trench, and then someone kind of you know stifle his neck that ah oh, ah, oh, so that kind of thing like that. So it is called a hanging man, all right. So the hanging man implies that okay, what's going to happen next? See these candles, these um, umbrella candles. They're, they're also indecision candles in the market. Okay, <laughs> they are also indecision candles in the market. They are part of the indecision candles in the market because because there is no confirmation yet. It is only an indecision phase. Okay, should I buy? Should I sell? Okay, so you always so you must always wait for confirmation before entering the market, right? So this is a hanging man here. This particular pattern is called the hanging man. All right. So when it forms at the at the top of a um, bullish trend, okay, when it forms at the top of a bullish trend, it it becomes a hanging man that has bearish complications. That means it has sell complications if found after a bullish trend. It becomes a hammer 
that is Hama, and as bullish communication is found after a market decline. Remember, this is the candle here, all right? Yeah, this is it as a hanging man. If it is from a downtrend market, it becomes a hammer when it forms at the bottom. So when it forms, of course, you know, you know the style. This candle for me, next one for me, oh boy. You need to wait for the candle to close below it. Don't ever enter when it's like this. Don't even enter when the market is doing um, moving any out, moving any out. Even in the in the um ebook, the author told you that okay, fine. You need to um, place a, a pending order, but no, don't ever try that, okay? Because the market can 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 spike price, take you out. That is what the market does most of the time. It's it takes out impatient traders, okay? It takes out impatient traders because before actually doing the intended thing, okay? So always wait for the candle to close, close below the lows of the previous candle. Then this is a confirmation, and then you sell. All right, and then you sell the market, okay? So the next one here, the next point here, it has bearish implications if found after a market buy, okay? Sells, it signals possible market stop, but a bearish confirmation is required before selling. Candle three must close lower than the previous candles, generate a sell signal. So see it here, Coming around here, this is the market's um, decline stage. Okay, this is the market decline stage, whereby it forms. Let's say the market was coming like this. Okay, then this one forms. Then the hammer form. It could form from around here. Okay, or it forms here, but then wait for the the third candle. It is actually form two candles. Okay, wait for the third candle to close above the highs of this candle and its previous candle. Okay, so the moment it's, it does that, buy here, where's the stop loss going to be? This is the low, right? Because this week didn't get down yet. So this is the market's low. So you put it around here. Because those low points, they are actually resistance levels, okay? They are actually support and resistance levels. So they are very, very important that, that it puts them away from those areas. The price, your, your stop loss must be, must be away from this area. So that's why it has to be below below the highs or below the lows, okay? So, let me raise all of this. Okay. So we have um, the short bullish candle, all right? The short bullish candle might have seen a, a tiny candle like that, although it's rare, it's more like a, a rare breed of candle, but then it actually appears. So the short bullish candle, if there are no shadows or weak, it is called a short bullish Marbozo candle, okay? So it is usually viewed as a trend continuation pattern. Okay, it is, it is usually viewed as a trend continuation pattern, all right? So if you should try to go to the um, live, to the live market situations, okay? You all actually need to focus on this because these are important steps. Should I say all of you make that mistake every time? And then when you, when you try to say that you are going to miss class for, um, you know, some other thing, you know, it's at your risk, but this is a very, very critical, Critical stage. This is a very, very critical stage for you to actually learn this. And if you miss it now, life can't ever look like you know a recording. That's always the truth about everything. So let's go to the live market and let's look for a short my bozo candy. Look at what I said the other time about um look at what I said the other time about the particular candle that we're talking about. See it for me here, okay. You can see that it's even close within this candle range. But what happens, the first candle didn't close above you. You can see the spike. So if you had put a pending order here, it might have even taken you out. Okay, it might have taken you out. So, so don't try, don't, don't really try pending orders. That's why I didn't teach pending orders. Don't try it, okay? Because price can spike, all right? 
price can spike above it. Okay. So as you can see, move spiked, but then this candle now close above it. So you buy from here, your stop loss is here at this place. If markets breaks this low, the market is reversing. Forget about it. If markets breaks through that low, the market is reversing. Okay, most, most of the time. So let's look for a, a short bullish candle if we can identify one. Because I Identifying candles in the market is a very, very important skill. If not, you make lots of mistakes. So even after the class, take time, take hours, you know, identifying those candles. Very, very important. It's very, very important. So we look for a short candle that actually serves as a trend continuation. Like I said, it's it's rare. Okay, this is this is um this is one here. This looks like one here, this particular one. This is a short bullish candle, very, very short, you know, low weeks and tiny, tiny weeks. Okay, let me say short weeks anyway. So when this candle forms, that short primary bozo candle, okay, a short bullish candle, when it forms, okay, it is telling that, okay, fine, market is trying to continue, okay? But if the opposing market pressure closes below the low of the candle, it means that the market is reversing. Okay, so all these candles that I'm showing you, when a market closes below where they form from, the market is reversing. Okay, that is why you will see that there are certain things that happen in the markets that when the market forms those candles, the the market doesn't break those places. Neither neither does it reverse below them. It just moves that way. This is how to identify them. These are hot spots in the markets, like um, this or down. This are a strong candle, a spinning top. Okay, then this one forms, but then you enter at this point, put your stop loss at this point. The market didn't decide to break below it. Okay, but when you don't understand how these things work, you, you start setting um, insane, insane wild stop loss. Think that, oh, if my stop loss is wide, no, it's not about wide stop loss. Okay, so about putting your stop loss at the right place. Okay, so this is this um, continuation pattern. It's not really a significant candle, but then just to tell you that, okay, fine, the market is actually. In your favor, but when this candle closes below the low, as you can see, it's actually sold below it. Okay, so let's move to the next one on the list. Next one on the list is called the bullish spinning top. Okay, remember those um, candle continuation patterns. Okay. Seems like we're having some, some kind of um, issue here. Okay, let me try to share the screen. Oh, Canva has closed already. Canva closed already. Let me try to open that again. So if you can't see the screen, it's your network. So your aha moment so far based on the candles, put them in the comment section. So that I would know that you are getting everything that I've been saying so far. Everything you've understood about what you said so far, put them in the comment section. Okay, put them in the comment section so that I'll know that learning has actually taken place. The candles are very, very important. Being able to identify them, very, very important. Okay, so after the class, you go back to the to the um, charts again, and possibly, I know what to give concerning the candles. Seems like we're having a bad mental kind of day. Okay. So the aha moment. Well, the um thing about the thing about um can do that um people talk about uh, mother blocks and those things, those those names are just given by humans. Okay, those names are just given by humans. Either you are calling them other blocks or whatever. I I, I don't see them as other blocks. When people talk about um, um other flow learning other flow, blah, 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 blah. And everything that I've learned, I do not call them other flow. I see them as normal learning experience, normal learning process, okay? So it all depends on what you call them, okay? So let's present this once again. So call the candles whatever you can probably the ones that will, that will lead to retention. Okay, just go them and try when you can. 
Okay, but remember the identification of each one. Identification is very, very important. And this whole thing takes, takes forever to load. Okay, so move to Okay, so this build has continuation pattern. So it's it can be at the middle or whichever way, but then all those indecision in candles have no significance in a straight market or a range market. Okay, so here is the award winning spinning top. <laughs> okay, so this is the bullish spinning top. Okay, this is a sign of market indecision and it is considered neutral in a sideways trend. That is a ranging market. Okay, in a trending market, it is part of a continuation pattern. Okay, get those points. So if found after a strong buy, it could signal positive reverse. It, will, it could signal pos, um, possible reversal for a drop. And if found after a strong sale, it could signal possible reversal for a pump. Okay, that is a buy, all right? So this implies that when this candle forms, okay, this is a spinning top. The weak, the upper and lower leg, um, um, weak or, or, or shadow most of the time are usually more than it, but then the body is always smaller than the weak, okay? The body is always smaller than so it is a so it is an indecision candle, okay. It is an indecision candle, and when it forms, maybe on the daily time frame, when you see this candle forming around one o'clock, that is on synthetic indices on currencies around eleven o'clock or so. I can't really remember. Market spaces are open during that period, okay. So if this candle forms after, let's say at the end of today, this candle forms, don't trade the following day because if you trade. It can go sideways. Um, they, they call it um, the thing going basketball. So how they put it? So this candle pattern signifies indecision. So after a trading day and this forms, it means that no decision has been made. So if you are trying to buy when buy has not been confirmed, you are on your own. Or if you are trying to sell when sell has not been confirmed, you are on your own. Okay, so this is a spinning top. Very, very important. Be able to identify this candle. Okay, so when it is formed at the top of a market, that is, let's say the market is buying from here. All right, buy, buy, buy. Okay, let's say that this is my um, bullish candle that forms here, and this candle forms. Okay, don't, don't think that it's actually going to buy until when the next candle closes below it. So if the candle closes below it, the next candle, it implies that, oh, this market is going to sell. Whenever the candle closes below the lows of the two previous candle, it is a confirmation signal, okay? Those are confirmation signals. And same thing with um, when the market price closes above it, okay? That is in a, in, a, in a downward trend, okay? In a downward trend, when market price comes like this, of course, the bullish candle must close, must close above it here for you to be able to buy. So I mean, it has to close above the highs of the previous candle before it, for you to be able to buy. So you buy around there, and set your stop loss below it, okay? You can give it a, a little buffer, but don't make it too far, okay? Don't make it too far, all right? So when a spinning top becomes a top reversal pattern, you know, seen after a buy, a spinning top and a long bullish candle take the form of a bearish harami, a top reversal pattern, okay? So this is, the um, harami pattern. Harami pattern um, means that maybe when a big body candle forms and then a small candle forms within the axis of the body, it is called the harami. It is more like the candle is pregnant. Okay, it is more like, okay, it, it tells you that, oh, this candle is pregnant. All right, so you don't know if it's going to give it to a male or a female. There is there is no scan in the, in the in the market. So there's no way you can scan if, 
there is no way you can you can scan the um the belly the the daily time frame <laughs> the daily time frame is called d1 okay daily time frame is called d1 so this implies that the candy is pregnant so there is no scan whatsoever to know if it's going to buy yourself until when the baby comes out from the body of the candle so the baby, so so if it comes out like this it's it's probably a male or a female and when it comes out it's probably a male or a female whichever one it is okay so it forms pregnant you don't know what it's going to give birth to okay fine you wait for a confirmation if after this bullish candle forms this candle forms and then the candle now closes above the eyes here oh the the uptrend is in continuation that's why they say it's like a continuation pattern but then it's a reversal pattern you need confirmation to enter okay and then if it closes below it that is forming a reversal this implies that oh you don't Closing below the lows of this one and this one it implies that the market is actually going down. So you sell from here and put your stop loss around here. And if the market breaks it, it means that it is going. When you are trying to trade M1, you are just trying to um, take a short position on, on M1. This is a good way to you know place your orders and um, take your entries. You know if the market breaks it, you can probably place your order and put your stop loss because it has it has. It is in a trend continuation, but something like this is a trend reversal. Put your stop loss above here. So this pattern is called the Arami pattern, a big candle with a with a small pregnant baby. And if the two candles, the baby and the mother, are of the same color, they are called homing pigeon. Okay, homing pigeon. All right, or harami if they are not the same thing. Okay, so then. This same one also, like, like what I said, seen after a, a, a bearish move. Okay, this is also a, a pregnant mom around here. So you have to wait for, for her to either give it to a male or a female before you start celebrating. Okay, before you start um, telling people around that, oh, she has given birth, she has given birth. Wait for the gender to come out. So I know that, oh, she has a boy, buy, buy the baby male clothes, or she has a girl, buy the baby female clothes. You can't just buy clothes for a pregnant woman when you, when you don't even know what is in her tummy. So if you are you are trying to sell this market with you that ah uh, she be she's pregnant eh, let me let me let me get that in male clothes and then it becomes a female you are lost okay so always wait for that to happen I will show you examples on the, on the daily time frame examples on the daily time frame okay so when this forms above the highs buy it if it breaks below sell it okay your stop loss below here. All right, your stop loss below here. So, so you need confirmation, entry confirmation, irrespective of what form, because they are all in decision process. So you need you need confirmation. You need that trend confirmation to know. And the trend confirmation must must close below the highs or the lows of that market before you can decide to enter. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next one. This this Canva app is getting on my nerves. So if you have if you have a bad network, just try to resolve that with your network provider. More problem trying to switch here. Okay. Oh, I think that is also so. We'll continue from the PDF. We'll continue from the PDF. So everything that I've talked about so far, if you understand, let me know. So in the live market situation, hmm, based on everything we've, we've talked about so far, let's use um, the daily time frame for example. Let me try to go through what Jesus said here. So on the daily time frame, maybe see such, let's say the next time it closes above or below the two previous time. We know the following day is going to depend on whether the market closes up or below. Yes, exactly. That's it. So looking at it, ha! This market is on a buy trend already. This market is on a buy trend already. I by one o'clock today, I can start looking for buying opportunities, but then it can be very, very because one thing about this on five is that it makes some kind of crazy moves. So if I decide to hold my my buy position to this place, what if it tries to retest again? We can't tell if it's retest, but then it is showing zones. 
that can actually possibly exit your trade. But as you can see, even with this stupid trend line here, the market is still broke it. Look at why I told you not to buy this market today. This is a spinning top forming around here. All right. A um, few days ago, that, that was last month. This is a bearish candle, a long bearish candle for me. And then a spinning top forming around there. This is a spinning top. Let me try to put this closer so that you, so that you, have, so you, so that you have a view of how this is. So this is a spinning top for me here. All right, this is a spinning top. As you can see, look at this very well. A spinning top here. Okay, so this bearish candle forms. Then I was thinking maybe, okay, fine, let me sell this market. But then the hope of selling the markets, okay, fine, you wait. Then you see that this candle is in a strong phase. So a stupid person will still decide. So a stupid person will decide to sell these markets for that. But then someone like me knows that this candle is pregnant. So let's wait for it to give birth. So I'm not the kind of clothes who buy for this, for this candle's big. Okay, but then, then look at it. When I was saying that, oh, this on five will soon buy, let's wait, let's wait till tomorrow, let's wait by one o'clock. Then what happened? You can see that the candle spiked that boost. Just of it, I was saying that you use spending order. If you spending all that, it's having bass boost around there. Okay, so you can see what happened here. The candle only spiked above it, but then it didn't close there. It closed within this trader. It didn't break this high here. This I can say that it didn't break it. So this implies that so far it is not able to break it. You have to wait for the next candle to break it, or you see what is going to form. So what happened? The next thing that happened is that it formed another indecision candle again. Another indecision candle. This is more like the hanging man, okay? Because it is it is it is above. So this is more like the hanging man pattern forming here. On this day, I didn't decide to, to um, trade the market because I was like, wow, if this candle can form this thing, we don't know what's going to happen next. So expecting it to close above these highs here, what happened? It closed below the lows of one, two, three. So from this pattern here, I wanted to sell this market. This was the setup that I was talking about that, that I missed. I wanted to, to sell this market to, I think, I think it was on this particular day. Let's move to the M30 time frame. I use the M30 time frame. Well, we'll talk about some more of that, how to do that. Okay. Okay, good. So I wanted to sell this market. I wanted to sell this market on that day. On that day after the close. But then I missed it around. I I I missed it in the morning or so. I can't remember. Okay, it's formed at night. So it hits this, this zone here. For me, look at the, the, the trigger it formed, what I said the other time. What trigger is this? This is more like the, um, this, is a, this is a spinning top for me here. This is a spinning top. This is a spinning top pattern, okay? It's formed here, it's formed here, but then I won't enter here. It has to close, so that means my entry was now what's here this red candle here stop loss around here markets went went down sweet sell tp hit let's go and that's all for the day then the next day funny enough after after the particular day what happened it's closed with a spinning top pattern you'll be like ah, what is this market trying to do around here okay okay so after this um, bearish close, it's formed spinning top pattern around here again. So I didn't trade the following day. And as you can see, the following day is even worse. Let me try to um, form. Let me put um, this whole thing. The following day was now worst. Worse than it. So if you had bought, if you had tried to buy yourself on that day, look at it. It is just from fry pan to fire, from fry pan to fire, from fry pan to fire, from fry pan to fire. Some people have thought of, oh, let me buy, let me buy, let me buy, because this pattern has formed here. It formed um, the inverted umbrella pattern, okay? The inverted hammer here. Then this can look close above here. Of course, you want to buy, let me buy, let me buy. Back, forth, back and forth, back and forth, wham, went down. So, you know next time that when the markets on the daily time frame, whenever you want to trade every day, go to daily time frame first. 
go to the data frame to check if it is a good day. Is today a good day? Hello, Horaku. Is today a good day? No, it's not a good day. Get the heck out of my sight. Okay, today's not a good day. Okay, I'm not ready for this day. So after this form, I didn't trade. After this one, I did trade. Then when this one formed again, this form, you can see that this one closed below the lows of one. So this is a doji pattern. Okay, a doji in the strong candle. Okay, so forming here, closing below this indecision and this indecision lows. So I decided to buy the markets on which day. Okay, this was this was the second sale that I missed again. That I missed again. I think this is one of this is one I missed in the morning. Okay, so you can see that those days are very, very important. If you decide to sell on the wrong day, you're on your own because it will end in tears. So don't sell on the wrong day. As you can see, this is even a very, a very, very sweet sale. From here, forming this candle, then a spinning top, spinning top, then a bearish close, closing below the lows of this candle. Then put um, your other year, stop loss year, CP around here, around here, around here, because because we're actually at the at the extreme lows of the market trend. At the extreme lows, I think maybe there was still space to move. That's why um, V75 is reversing because because of this resistance. I remember what I thought about resistance yesterday. This low, so markets broke out of here, so it wasn't able to break through it. So as you can see, after this bearish daily candle formed, and I decided to sell on that day. What happened? The sell went well, but after my sell went well, what happened? It now formed a spinning top. What's a spinning top? It's either a continuation pattern or indecision. Either way, the candle is pregnant. Oh my God, candle, you are pregnant again. You are pregnant again. Okay, fine. Let's see what you give it to. So it seems like, okay, let's let's call the um, um, bullish candle a guy. Okay, so it seems like the, the candle is, is trying to give it to a, to a guy. But then let's see if it's going to give it to a complete guy or an imbecile. Okay, because we don't know if it's going to be a complete guy, an imbecile, or a complete girl. Okay, so. So, if you are trading with some five, not these times, ah, or more, bass boost, anyhow, 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 it's just be hitting you. Bah, bah, bah. As you can see, all these days, all these are the worst trading days. <laughs> the worst days. So, after spinning top forms, someone said um, he wants to sell. I can't, I can't remember who, who, who actually said it, but then I said, don't sell because this is spinning top. decision. You don't know if you need to give it to a guy or a girl. Now, as you can see, it seems like I give it to a girl. So, if at the end of today, this candle closes above here and above here, we, we can be looking for buy opportunities. So, based on what I'm seeing here, since I've marked where I'm going to exit, because this is a potential market exit zone. So, I can decide to sell from, to buy from somewhere around. Let me use this um, rectangle to mark today's candle. So, that's okay. My buy order can probably form from here because this is a new low, a new market low. Can, can probably form, form from here or form, or form from here or form from here. Okay. But then I know that I will be targeting this high around there. I'll be, I'll, I'll exit this high because I can't trust this 75 if it is going to break through here because th there, are, there are certain days whereby the market are actually done different tricks on people, you know, instead of it to um, just move further, it just kept ranging again. So this 75 can decide to range. So you should always exist before the um, ambush zone. So it seems like we'll be looking for buy tomorrow if the candle closes above the highs of this candle. So, so if so, does this look simple? This looks simple. Let me know. Okay. This looks simple. Let me know. This looks simple. Let me know. Either you are trading MT4 or MT5. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Market is market. Market is market. Okay, the market is a market. All right, the market is a market. So, this is how to identify um, those candle patterns. So, let's move to the next one. Uh, we stopped at spinning top. Stop at spinning top. Mm. I just have to. Okay. Where is our spinning top page? 
Let me try to search for that from the index here. Spinning top, spinning top, where are thou? Oh, ye spinning top, where are thou? Oh, ye spinning top. Okay, these are umbrella candles. Page 60. Let's look at this from page 60. Let's look at it from page 60. Okay, so these are really, really hot, hot stops. We call them hot stops, hot stops, uh, hot stops. So where is the spinning top? Okay. Try to get the book here. So I have I have um, certain notes here. Uh, I get certain notes of that here, so that I won't get to miss them. Just for simplicity, I have my notes also that I kept just in case because I, I understand them more, and then most of the notes are just from live market situations. Right, most of the notes are from live market situations. Okay. So just a few more seconds and I'm good to go. Okay. So this is where we are. So this is where we are. So in the comment section right now, I'm up <laughs> so uh so this is the white lower shadow you know the white lower sh shadow is is likely to be a continuation pattern as the bulls are still in control of the market this white shadow candle around here okay so this candle bullishness will only be threatened if there is a close below its low on the next candle. So that means after this candle forms on the, in the market, okay, let's assume that the market has been has been on a bullish turn, maybe around here, start moving, 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 moving. Okay, then the market starts moving and moving. Let me try to move this here upwards. Okay, so markets moves and moves and moves. Okay, and then this candle forms if the candle after it moves upwards. Oh, it's a continuation. Okay, that's why it is. It's a continuation pattern. But if after this bullish candle forms and then the next candle closes below it here, it means that the market, the bullish pressure, is being threatened. Okay, it means that the bullish pressure is being threatened. All right, the bullish pressure is being threatened. Okay, so. You should, whenever I see a candle, like you should always wait for the next close. If the next close, we close above it here or below it around here. Okay, so this is a, this is called a white lower shadow. It's a kind of bull, um, bullish candle also. All right, so always wait for confirmation. Okay, and then the next one, the next one is um, white upper. Shadow. So here is an illustration instead of going to the other one. As you can see, this this white lower shadow for me here. Okay, if this candle has closed below it here, it would mean that market is actually going for a real sell. This is a sell for real, like real, real, real. So, but this candle closed above it, like this next white candle closed above it. So, if anyone is even trying to buy, can just buy here. Stop losses here. Okay, as simple as that, bro. And then you keep moving. Okay. So uh, this is a spinning top pattern for me here. Spinning top for me around here. So this is a spinning top here. 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 Okay. So this is spinning top here. This is spinning top here. This is almost like spinning top, but then it's it's a doji. Spinning top here, spinning top here. 
spinning top here. So electrification is very, very important. Just understand the concepts behind it. Just understand the concepts behind the moves. Okay, you know that a spinning top somehow the body is always smaller than either of the weak. Okay, the body the body is always smaller than either of the weak, and then it's always it's it, it still has a weak or a shadow above it. Okay, but that way the the um, body is always smaller than the weak. That is a spinning top. But when it doesn't have a body at the top, I mean, when it doesn't have a shadow at the top, you know, it is it is an umbrella pattern in hammer. So either way, there are still indecision candles. Okay, so a why is the white shadow for me here? Continuation. Wow, good to go, bro. Bye. This is a small bullish candle. So this is a white lower shadow for me here again. Wow, bro. Should we sell or buy? We have a continuation pattern. Just buy around there. This is a buy. Okay. Then I put my stop loss here. So that's it. And we're good to go. Okay. So if this is great value, let me know. And then white upper shadow. Okay. White upper shadow is also likely a continuation signal unless confirmed by a close below its low. Okay. So it's still the same thing since there are still bullish candles, okay? So if a candle closes above it, this is normally a buy, a, a, a bullish candle, a buying candle, okay? So if, if next candle closes above it here, oh, we can still continue buying. But if it closes below it here, breaking this place, breaking this support, oh boy, this is a selling market. This is a selling market. Get out, get out, or so probably, which way it is, but this is, a reversal, it tells you that the market is going against you. Okay, it tells you the market is going against you. So, when a long white candle breaks resistance, a long white candle reflects extreme power and strength behind the move. Maybe, maybe um, the market is trying to consolidate around somewhere here. Let me try to raise all of this. Try to raise all of this. So, that is after maybe a certain move or a consolidation, and then a long white candle breaks it. It has strong, it's, it has a strong move duplication. It's, it reflects extreme power. So found after a series of small candles around here, it is a strong signal of a breakout to the upside. So if another bullish candle forms above it again. It is a real buy signal, okay? A real buy signal. But then long candle after a consolidation, strong candle after a consolidation, it's a it's a straight win for you. It's a trade. And if you are trying to be a conservative trader, you can decide to buy after the next move forms above it here, okay? And then when a long white candle is seen at a low price area, Long white can that is long bullish candles seen at a low price area signifies the bulls attempting control. Okay. See from here, the market forms in a consolidation. Then the first time it shows a long candle of the opposition. This tells you that hmm, something special is trying to happen here. And then the second time again, this second time it forms this kind of move. What 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 does that tell you? It tells you that wow, this market is going upwards. In a consolidation, when you notice a kind of strong candle in between, it tells you that someone is trying to take over, like this particular person is trying to take over. So when it now has a breakout, as a confirmation, it's a good way to buy. And then of course your stop loss at um, after a breakout is always below the breakout zone, so not within it, below or above the the um, range market zone. So, okay. So if this is actually explanatory, let me know. It is something you can always go through over, over, over and over again. Okay, you can always go through it over and over again. So see something like this happen around here. You can see this long white candle breakout, long white candle straight swing, long white candle straight swing. You know, so we can proceed to the next one, and um, that's the black candles. Okay. The black candles. So this is the long Maribozo black candle. Okay, similar as we saw the um, long Mar uh, Maribozo white candle. It's also a bullish candle. Forget about some more this name. I can't keep, keep giving this name, this names in my head for how many years. Okay, <laughs> so this is a long bearish candle. When this candle forms, it means a strong day for the market to die. 
Okay, it depicts bearish control. See it for me here, bearish control. Okay, so it depicts bearish control. It means that sellers are willing to further depress this market. They are willing to further cause depression for this day market, you know. They are trying to cause depression for your own market. Wow, so sad. Okay, so then the next one is the um, long black candle. This kind of candle also, it, it, it has a short um, upper shadow and, and um, lower shadow, also known as weak. So it means that sellers are also willing to depress this market, okay? Very, very straightforward. So if I do understand the bullish one, this one shouldn't be a problem. Long opening candle also. It means that sellers are also trying to defy the price market. So maybe on, on daily time frame, when this market overcomes other candles, it means that you, you can be selling this market. That that is that day after the close of this one, because at that day, if you sell this candle, you have higher win rates. If you sell this market today, you have higher win rates. If you sell this market today, you have higher win rates. Okay. So then we move to the inverted umbrella. Okay, so the inverted black umbrella still called a shooting star. If found at the top of the market, and it is called an inverted ama if found at the bottom of your market, this particular market, this particular uh, candle, you know, at the top of the market, at the top, any candle that any indecision candle that forms at the top of a market, it is a shooting star. Okay, it is called a shooting star. All right, and then at the bottom, they are, they are usually called, um, they are usually called a star also. They are actually called a star also, either at the bottom or at the top. So at the top, they are, they are actually um, giving the name um, um, evening star because trying to fall to the night, okay? And then at the bottom, trying to go upwards, morning star, okay? So, but then just understand the concept behind these things, okay? So whenever this candle forms, it's, it is an indecision candle, okay? So it has, um, bearish implications at the top of your market trend. But then this umbrella can do both the umbrella and the spinning top. Whenever they form, the candle does the, the color does not matter. When it comes to indecision candle, it is the position, the location that matters. If they form at the at the decline or at the top of a trend, yeah, they hold significance there. So the color does not matter, either it is bluish or bearish, it does not matter at all, it doesn't matter. So whenever this one forms, either as inverted black or as inverted white, wait for a bearish confirmation that closes below the lows of the candle before it, for it to confirm the sale. And then um, the black umbrella candle, it is called the hammer. This is also called the hammer, black hammer. You know, we've seen the white hammer. All right, so this is also called the black hammer. So this implies that seems like the market is trying to make a decision. Okay, market is trying to make a decision. That is if it is at the, at the bottom of a market, it, is, it becomes the hammer, okay? So the market is trying to make a decision to either buy or hold. So you need a buy confirmation closing above the highs of the candle before it and the, and the candle itself. Let's say the candle forms around here, okay? Forgive my drawing. If a candle close above it, you buy stop loss below here. Okay, so this is also an, a hammer. And if it forms at the bottom, I mean at the top, it is a hanging man. Okay, a black hanging man. The first one was a white hanging man, right? The second one is a black hanging man. Okay, so and we'll, we'll call this to a close very soon. Just stay close. And then this is a short black candle. Short black candle is also a continuation pattern, but then you need a continuation confirmation to tell if it is going to buy or sell. So this is black. Possibly it will it would most likely form in a downtrend, but if it's but if it forms a bullish trend candle closing above the highs here yeah, of the week of the upper shadow. That means the market is likely going upwards. And if that, that bullish can now forms another one again, uh, it is done. The market has taken over. The, the buyers have taken over. But then after the standard forms and it further shows a bearish candle below it, below the lows, you are still in position. All right. It means that you are still in position. Let me let me make the um, illustration. <clears throat> 
let's assume the market has been coming down. Mm? Market has been coming down. And then it forms this black short candle. This is a continuation pattern. But they are not sure if it's going to go um, down further or it's going to go upwards. So if the next candle that forms is a bullish candle, okay, is a bullish candle closing above the eyes here. Yeah. So the eyes of the week, you know that the market is actually going up. So this is for me more like an engulfing candle pattern. If it now forms another candle above it, it means that the buyers have totally taken over because this is, a, this is supposed to be a continuation signal. But then the, the opposition has taken over it, closing above its eye. So the move is threatened already, all right? The strength of this candle is threatened already. But then if after the market, when the market is coming down like this, the next candle closes below it at this low around here, it means that you should hold your trade. It means that you can still hold your trade, continue holding the trade position. You are safe, okay? So that is just what it means, short black candle, short white candle, all right? So if you have a note, you are much wiser, Get to this. So this is the black spinning top, all right? The black spinning top. Remember what I said, spinning top, the color doesn't matter, but then we have to identify them as black and white, but the color doesn't matter, it's a position. So if this, so the spinning top is a continuation pattern or an indecision pattern, okay? So if it forms after a bearish market, well, that is after a sale, it forms this day, hold, don't trade for that day or don't trade for that hour, or don't trade for that minute, all right? Wait for the next next one to form. Either it is daily, weekly, um, um, daily, weekly, one hour. It means that the next, the next, the next one hour is, is, going, is going to be rough, okay? It means that the next one hour is going to be rough, all right? So when, it's, so, so when that comes up, you have to wait for the next candle to close. So if this, um, candle forms and then a bullish candle forms, overtaking the highs of it and the candle before it, it is a buy. You would see all of that illustration below, possibly. So, remember what I said, it is still the same law that applies. Okay, the color doesn't matter. After a market, let's say this is the eye of the previous candle, and then instead of it to form higher, it forms maybe the next candle closes above the highs of this candle and maybe the candle here. Okay, so that means you would buy at this point and then your stop loss would be at this point, okay, around here, all right? So this is the black spinning top. Spinning top is in decision. Whenever you see it, stay away from the markets for that particular time. And then this is the black lower shadow. The black lower shadow, it's, it can appear in consolidation pattern or a trend, cons or a trend continuation, okay? It means that the market is probably trying to further move the markets for itself, okay? Further move the markets for itself. So if a bullish, can, a bearish candle forms below it, that implies that markets is trying to continue. <laughs> markets is trying to continue for the sale, okay? But if after here, a a um, bullish candle forms and breaks it above it and the candle before it, it is going for a buy, but this is a continuation pattern, okay? The same as this one also, it's a continuation pattern. So you need a bearish confirmation. If it shows a sell signal, it's a sell, okay? That means the, the market will still continue to sell. But then if, but, but then if it has a candle that goes above it and with another candle accompanying it, then it is a buy. Okay, so this is also a continuation pattern. So when there's a consolidation and then a long black candle forms, after the consolidation, the breakout is always cool to follow because it will take a while before the candle will come back because this is a strong decision. All right, this is a strong decision. This is a strong selling decision after a consolidation. <clears throat> so predominance of white candles over black candles in the market has bullish complications, okay? See here, and, predom and predominance of black candles in 
a selling market as bearish, as bearish um, communications. Like here, looking at this um, particular market here, as, as you can see, this market has more of red, 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 red market. So this tells you that you should just think about selling it for the next few days, unless it's just signal to buy. Like here, look at here, this is the bottom of the market's trade. This bearish candle showing indecision, then it break out for a buy. So let's see if the candle will close above the highs and then we can take a buy to this point or possibly to this point here. Okay, but then the when a, a particular candle takes over a, a market trend, it signifies that that, that um, trend is in power. See it here. Bullish candle, bullish candle, bullish candle, bullish candle, less of bearish candle tells you that the market is still buying. Okay, but around here, tells you that the market is selling. So predominance of these candles are very, 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 very important. Predominance of these candles are very, very important. Okay. So looking at it here, as you can see, spinning top, close, long black candle, indecision, breaks it, this candle forming, wipe it down, and this one's like that. So when this one came down below it, forming this spinning top around here, then this candle closed above it, as you can see. This candle here now eventually closed above it here. See? Mm, didn't, didn't draw that well. See, this very this bearish candle forming, spinning top, first candle didn't close above it, second candle closed above it, by the market will surely be up. As can, it's even showing that it's going upwards already. Okay, so it is, it is not like as if you know the mind of the market now. Isn't it as if you know the mind of the market right now? Like knowing all these things, that, oh, my market does this, my market does that. If it feels like you know the market now, like you know the mind, somehow you know the mind, put that in the comment section. Okay, remember losses are inevitable. Okay, we surely encounter losses at some point, which is a normal thing. Okay, so if it seems like you know the mind of the market, at least to an extent, let me know. So, Tim and Angie, we will eventually close for the day. Waiting for one last one. One last one. Okay, so at the end of today, you will just um, go back to your um charts and then you know get to relate um this thing so we close for the day and then tomorrow we begin from doji okay so make sure you go back to your charts everything that we've talked about search for them identify them and then the assignment for um this class is this i'm thinking of how we can actually do that because this is this is this is um something this is something that should actually reinforce identification because if you don't know how to identify the candles, as you can see, even me talking about the hammer and whatever, market still shows variation. So you should be able to identify them. So how am I going to do this? Okay. Very good. You can take um that is your exercise. If you do not do this, trust me, you are hurting yourself. It's just the, the real thing. This is my book here. I've been using this jotter for long. Been using this jotter for long. Let me stop sharing. Been using this jotter for long. Look at how I drew everything. So how the air printer be able to identify candle patterns? So this is what you do, get a jotter, all the candles we've talked about, possibly draw those patterns four or five times. The, the candle confirmation, draw them four or five times. When you draw them and it gets back to the markets, you'll be able to identify them. Remember, if you do not draw them, you would forget them and you're back in square one. Okay, so draw them as you can see. This is something that I did, I did by myself. So I won't just tell you to do something when I don't even know how to do it. Okay, so get a jota draw these patterns and when i would probably um, prepare your test and give it to you i would see if you've actually learned everything well or you haven't learned everything well so and then we'll be closing for the day remember the assignment take jota draw everything snap them to the group do them before tomorrow's class put them to the group before tomorrow's class anyone that isn't present then all the best for them so the candle patterns we've talked about 
draw each one with their names, each one with their names. And then, and then when you get to the market situation, screenshot your charts in a, you know, try to relate those, those particular candle patterns, try to relate them with the ones of your chart so that you're able to understand them very well. All right. So the recording will still be on the same site. Okay. Should I should I use that same site site address? No, I want to use that same site address. I will do something different again, but it will still be the same one. Dash next pages dot net slash. Whose person name can I use there? Let's use um, Kizito. We use Kizito slash Kizito. So in case everyone forgets, is is going to remind you. So on this site, I would I will upload the recording for the day, and I'll see you soon. A great day to everyone. What's